And now we invite you to listen to the adventures of the Falcon as Mike Waring solves the case of the Big Six. <laughs> There's one thing you learn working as a private detective. Haste doesn't always make waste. As a case in point, I'll give you Dutch Schneider. Dutch is a solid-looking citizen behind the mahogany desk at the Belvedere Club. He's a gambler by profession, but that doesn't mean he takes chances. No, Dutch likes to play it nice and safe. That probably explains why he stares with obvious disbelief at a light on his desk, which flicks on and off with appropriate sound effects. O'Neill. Yeah. What's going on out there? What do you think, Dutch? It's a raid. Are they doing any damage? Can't you hear it? No. I'll take my word for it. They're playing awful rough. I'm glad they're having fun. Who's in charge? I am, Mr. Snyder. Never mind, O'Neill. You want to see me? Yes. What's your name, officer? Corbett. Sergeant Corbett. Why wasn't I notified of this raid? Would you mind repeating that, please? I asked why I wasn't warned. Your boys must have done at least $100,000 worth of damage. Easy. You know who's going to pay for it? Oh. You. Oh, on my salary? Don't be silly. Anil. What is it, Dutch? Give me Arthur Hall on the phone. Oh, now I get it. Is Arthur Hall your contact man? That's right. Well, this is the funniest thing I've heard yet. You think so? I know so. So he clipped you, too. I'm surprised at you, Dutch. What are you talking about? I'll bet Arthur sold you a bill of goods that could keep us out of your hair if you paid off to him. Well? Well, he was kidding you. Arthur Hall has as much influence in New York as my brother-in-law. And even with me on the force, he can't get himself arrested. If Hall was bluffing, why wasn't my club knocked off before? Well, you're just lucky. We're understaffed, and we didn't get around to you. I see. And he can't get over it. Arthur Hall clipping a hip carry, too, IQ. You're right, Sergeant. It is funny, but you'll pardon me if I don't laugh. Right now, the joke seems to be on me. Uh, yes. You're late? I, uh, I was detained at the office, Peggy. Why didn't you answer your phone? Dr. Snyder has been trying to reach you all evening. Oh, did, did he call here? Mm-hmm. You know, Arthur, I got the idea he was a little annoyed with you. Why? What did he say? wasn't what he said, darling. It was the way he said it. Listen, Peggy, I, uh, I'm going to leave town for a few days. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, something, something's just come up. You remember Al Morris. Arthur, you don't have to explain. You know I trust you implicitly. When are you leaving? Right now. I'm uh, going to Los Angeles. Oh, that explains it. That explains what? Why, North American Airlines called and confirmed your reservation to St. Louis. Well, they must have made a mistake. Yes. Uh, hello, Peggy. Hello. Dutch. Uh, wh- what are you doing here? Well, there are a couple of things I want to take up with you. Do you mind leaving us alone for a while, Mrs. Hall? Yes, Peggy. No, Peggy, come back. Peggy. That's the swell girl they got there. Listen. Listen, Dutch, I know what you're going to say. Good, then I won't have to say it. There, there was a slip-up. I've been on the phone all day. Those boys had no right to raid your place. Oh, but they did. Well, I, I, I've got an appointment to talk to the commissioner tomorrow. I don't see how you're going to manage it. What do you What do you mean? Well, to talk properly, you should have teeth. And I'm sorry. I don't think you're going to have many left. Oh! oh. oh. Are you George Kelk? Mm-hmm. I'm Arthur Hall. I spoke to you on the phone. Oh, yes. I'll be with you in a minute. I, uh, I've got to hear this record. Look, Kelk, I'm a busy man. Well, if you're in a hurry, Mr. Hall, you'd better take your business elsewhere. Well, I'll wait. That's the ticket. Pretty, isn't it? It's WC. Uh-huh. You know what's responsible for most of the troubles in this world, Mr. Hall? People assign the wrong values to things. Now, take music, for example. That's important. Because there's a common denominator. Look, Kelk, I didn't come over here for a lecture. Well, there's no extra charge. Uh-huh. All right, Hall, what can I do for you? Want to do a job for me? Not particularly. But I'm a craftsman, Mr. Hall. I only accept commissions I like. I'll pay you $500. Oh, you're not even in my register. You'll have to go higher. A thousand. Well, that's a little better. Um, have you got the money on you right now? Well, yes, but it's, it's all I have at the moment. Well, it's enough for me. All right. Two, four, six, eight, eight, mm-hmm. Uh, what's the name of your party? Dutch Schneider. You know him? Uh, only by reputation. You're the one who bounced you around? That's my business. As you say, Mr. Hall, it's your business. 
So if you'll allow me, I'll be getting down to mine. Second. Yes? You Dutch Schneider? Right. Kelk is my name. Georgie Kelk. Kelk, is mm-hmm. Have I heard that name before? I don't know. Have you? But sure, you're the... Go on, Dutch. You won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> Either not take any chances. Well, frankly, it won't make much difference. Sit down. You, uh, mind if I smoke? Hey. Uh, try my brand. Get a match? Sure. Catch. Okay. Thanks. Where, uh, where do I get it, Kelk? Um, what's wrong with right here? Aren't you afraid of the noise? I guess he didn't notice the silence around this baby. Excuse me for trying to tell you your business. That's quite all right. You don't mind talking? Not at all. Oh, I see you went for the classical. Mm-hmm. Whose album is that you've got on the Tchaikovsky piano concerto? Rubenstein. Oh, have you hear Horowitz play it? I like Rubenstein's better. Got a lot more fire. Oh, you're out of your mind. No one can touch Horowitz when it comes to execution. <laughs> you ought to know. Oh, that's all right. So tell me something, Dutch. Uh, why is it the nice guys always get it? Well, there's no reason why they should. <laughs> now, look, Kelk. I don't want to insult you, but uh, can't we talk this over? No, I'm afraid not. I know who put you up to it. It was Arthur Hall. Well, now, what difference does that make? A lot. You got nothing in common with Hall. Wouldn't you rather work for me? Oh, definitely. But it's uh, too late now. Why? You can't tell me you're afraid of Hall. I don't know what he gave you, but I'll pay you $10,000 for that gun. Fully loaded. Well, I don't know, Dutch. I've never done anything like this before. And if I did now, I, uh, I wouldn't want you to think that the money you're offering had... Any effect on my decision? Of course not. No, but there was, uh, there was something about that fellow Hall that just rubbed me the wrong way, you know? Mm-hmm. All right, Dutch. Get the dough. Hi. What the... How did you get in here? Superintendent, I was a friend of yours. Good for you. I'm glad you made yourself at home. You don't mind my taking off my shoes? Not a bit. I like to see people comfortable. You ought to get some better reading material. There's a racing form you overlooked. No, I didn't. Last week. I'm terribly sorry, Miss... Uh... Hall, Peggy Hall. Only it's Missy. And I'm the one to be sorry. Should I put my shoes back on? Why be formal? You know, Mr. Waring, you're a welcome change for most of the private detectives I know. You know many? I've got one in the family. Arthur Hall. Have you heard of him? Unfortunately. He's my husband. I once heard him say he'd never do business with me. It's a wonderful recommendation. That's what I thought. I think my husband's playing around. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Find out who the girl is and what their plans are. You bucking for a divorce? Mm Mm-hmm. How about your husband? Won't he fight it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Oh, oh look, Sergeant, I'm busy. You're always busy, Waring. Why don't you take a little time out once in a while? I'm not crowning, Corbett. Neither am I. This lady's Peggy Hall, isn't she? How would you know? Well, I'm a detective, too. Like to see how I operate? Love to. Well, first, I went to your home, and the maid told me you left a message. That if anybody looked for you, you'd be closeted with a falcon here. What? Oh, Mike, you are a devil. Look, Corbett, what are you getting at? Didn't she tell you? No, all she told me is she wanted to get rid of her husband. And she did. We just found his body. Put your shoes on, Lucy. Those stone floors at headquarters can be awfully cold on your tootsies. In a moment, we'll continue with the adventures of the Falcon. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. There's no cliche, it's always darkest before the dawn. And judging by the signs here, daybreak was way off. While Sergeant Corbett gazed about my office, I watched my client, Peggy Hall, put on her shoes. A little thing like that can tell you a lot. To me, it proved two things. One, my client was innocent. And two, she had lovely ankles. You like what you see, Will? I love it. You're going to hate me for asking this, Peggy, but did you kill your husband? Do I look 
look like the kind of a girl who would. Oh, you're a bounder, Mike. I know. I ought to wash my mouth out with soap. All right, Angel, who do you think did it? I have no idea. But if you'd asked me, you'd have liked to. I'll amend the question. Well, Dutch Snyder, for one. Two for two. I think Dutch ought to be enough to hold you for a while. A boy like Dutch could hold me for life. What do you have against Arthur? Arthur convinced him he was a man with contacts. I get it. How much did he nick Dutch for? I really don't know. But it must have been a substantial amount. Figures. That's quite an achievement to take money away from Mr. Schneider. I wonder if I could get in touch. I'll let you kids know if I score. All right, you guys, will you step on it? Those guys' tables, they'll be ready in time. Where's the roulette set up? Now, what's that in here, Dutch? Well, it's doing me no good in that case. Get it open. Hello, Dutch. Why, if it isn't the one and only Falcon. I thought they closed you up. They did. And what's all the activity for? Well, it gives the boy something to do. I like to see him occupied. It keeps him out of trouble. Oh. What's on your mind? Uh, can we talk someplace where there's less danger of me being hit on the head by a hammer? Sure. <laughs> Come in the office. Watch your step. I always try to. Sit down. Thanks. How about a shot of old smuggler? A wearing never says no. Soda? Just a squirt. There you are. Yeah. Salute. Salute. Yeah, this is good. All right, wearing. To what do I owe the pleasure? Well, for one thing, I was wondering whether you found a successor to Arthur Hall. A successor? Well, Arthur used to work for you, didn't he? Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mike. I could use a good contact man. Uh, what should I just think of? Oh, what's wrong with you? Me? Oh, I got a client. So what? So I'm afraid your interests are diametrically opposed. I'm working for Peggy Hall. Well, don't tell me the police believe she killed her husband. How did you know he was dead? Well, several sources. As a matter of fact, I think there was a flash on the radio about an hour ago. What did it say? Nothing much. Only that someone sent a 32 slug through Arthur's brain in his office, and the cops were holding a hot suspect. This is why. Well, that proves they're out of their minds. Why would Peggy kill him? Well, it seems Arthur signed everything he owned over to her, and she didn't want to give it back. Well, that's no motive. Well, I forgot to mention that everything Arthur owned amounted to close to $100,000. Hey. <laughs> you private detectives do all right. Well, there are detectives and detectives, Dutch. Now, Arthur had a few soft touches. He convinced a couple of clients he had political connections, and he was looking for a fat little fee each week. Yeah, you don't have to tell me. I was one of the principal contributors. So I've heard. What gets me is why the police haven't talked to you. Maybe they have. Why'd you tell them? Obviously enough to convince them I didn't murder Arthur. You want to try convincing me? Where's my percentage? How's your drink? The drink? Oh, fine. You want one for the road? Oh, I don't know, hurry. I can spare another few minutes. <laughs> Well, I can't. It's okay, Dutch. You don't have to beat me over the head. I can take a hint. I'll see you around the pool room. Hello, Dutch. Why, Kel. You're the last man I expected to see. Well, I hope you don't mind my dropping around. I, um... Brought over the Horowitz recording of the piano concerto. Oh? Yes, I thought maybe you'd like to compare it with the Rubenstein job. You, uh, really didn't come for that. Did you count? <laughs> I guess there's no use my trying to kid you. Huh? No use at all. It's funny. I've known you, uh, how long? Maybe, uh, 24 hours, and yet I feel that there's a bond between us. Do you? Mm hmm. Why, you know me better than I do myself. For example, I used to think I was incorruptible. <laughs> oh, come now. No, I mean it. I always prided myself that once I undertook uh, an assignment, nothing could swerve me from my purpose. But uh, you did, didn't you, Dutch? And you did it with money. Did I do that? Yes, you uh, put ideas in my head. Oh, get to the point, Kel. Well, all I'm trying to say is that suddenly money... Has become tremendously important to me. So? So I want lots of it. And do I look like Fort Knox? Well, a reasonable facsimile. I uh, sold you your life at 9 o'clock last night for $10,000. That was pretty cheap, but... Why, well, I bet I could have gotten five times that. Easily, if I had that much air. Well, you better start raising it. Otherwise? Otherwise, i go to a fellow named Mike Wary. No. You wouldn't do that. Why not? I just don't think you would. Why, well, you're wrong, Doc. How can I be? You admit I know you better than you do yourself. 
And I don't see you going to Mike Waring. I just don't see it. Let me see if we understand each other, Kel. I think we do now. And you'd be willing to repeat the same story to the cops? Why not? Well, you admitted that you'd been hired by Arthur Hall to take care of Dutch Schneider. Well, nothing happened to Dutch, did it? No. What can happen to me? You've got a nice logical mind. Thank you. Well, what do you think will be Dutch's reaction when he learns you've been up here? Well, I'm really not worried. You see, I can look after myself. Want me to prove it? Open your desk drawer. What? Go on. Start with the bottom one on the right. What are you talking about? You've got a recording machine somewhere in there, and you've been taking down every bit of this dialogue. How did you know that? Oh, you're talking to a man who keeps up with the latest in that field. I do a little home recording myself. Oh. But, uh, who thought of placing the microphone in the waste paper basket? Me? I picked it up from a story I once read. Well, really, it's a cute idea. Yeah. All right, Waring, get away from the desk. Put away the gun, Cal. I said get away from that desk. Don't get it. <laughs> How do you feel? Are you scared? Oh, that's too bad. Uh, Next time, remember, you're not dealing with an amateur. I never auditioned for free. Listen, Kelk. Now, look ahead. Just take a little more water, Mike. No, no more. Come on, come on. Well, let me... Oh! Now, just take it easy. Now, take it easy, chum. Something new has been added. Huh? Yeah. Three stitches in your scalp. What? When when did you get here, Tiger? About an hour ago. Well, let me let me see that desk. Well, there's nothing to see there. No, you'll have to buy yourself a new recorder. Listen, Corbett, a boy named George Kelk was up here. Yeah, I know. You kept babbling his name. Well, he can clear Peggy oh, Hall. Now look, I Mike. tell you, I had the evidence on that machine. Oh, sure, sure. Will you stop trying to humor me? Arthur Hall originally hired this Kelk to bump Dutch Schneider. Only Dutch was lucky and bought his way out. Now, is that a strong enough motive for you? You mean for Dutch getting back at Arthur Hall? Yeah. Well, I'd be out of my mind to say it wasn't. Well, Kelk can prove the whole business. Oh, oh, oh no, he can't. Look, Sergeant, I talked with the man. He told me that 9 o'clock last night he went up and braced Dutch. That's where you run into trouble. I don't see why. Well, that's because you haven't seen the autopsy report. Arthur Hall was dead at 8. What? That's right. A full hour before Kelk even got to Dutch. <laughs> yeah, you better get the aspirin, Mike. Your headaches are just beginning. In a moment, we'll continue with the adventures of the Falcon. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. If Georgie Kelk made me sick, Sergeant Corbett wasn't exactly what the doctor ordered either. When I refused to believe that Arthur Hall was killed an hour before he even met Dutch Schneider, the sergeant showed it to me in black and white. There you are. Now, will you behave? When did this autopsy report come through? Around 6.15 tonight. Why didn't you call me? I tried to, but you were out. Well, you could have left... No. You got any other leads? No. Your client, Mrs. Hall, still refuses to tell us what she did with the gun. What gun? Well, the one she bought three months ago in a pawn shop. Why? Well, to t- hear her tell it, she was afraid with Arthur away from home so often. That's possible. Sure. Why'd she buy it under a phony name? She's a woman. Oh, yes, of course. That explains everything. Well, how'd you finally run it down? Through the car. The pawnbroker remembered she was driving a blue sedan, and they got the first four numbers of the license. Pretty observant boy. What kind of a gun was it? A police special. Is that what was used on Hall? Could be. The slug we tried out of the wall was too battered to tell. Look, Corbett, Peggy didn't kill her husband. It's not in character. Oh, that's good. That's real good. <laughs> you spend all of 60 minutes with the girl, and already you've got her analyzed. I tell you the... Wait a minute. Oh, if I'm not the original idiot, yes, boy. I've been saying that for years. Where's Peggy now? Where'd he expect? Well, I gotta see her. I just thought of something. The way my mind is working lately, I can't take a chance of forgetting it. <laughs> I can do, Peggy. Why, anything at all, just let me know. Thanks, Dutch, but I can't think of the pain. Mike Waring's taking care of everything. Well, much as I dislike the guy, i got to admit he's capable, but if you want anybody else... Open him up, Sussman. Oh. Hello, Peggy. What happened to you? I used my head when I shouldn't have. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had company. It's all right, Mike. I'm leaving. Don't on my account, Dutch. Uh, the sergeant here has a call out for Georgie Kelk. Kelk? Hadn't you heard? He was up to see me tonight. I didn't think he would. Why not? I didn't think he knew anything about Arthur's murder. You're right. He didn't. Oh, hey, Mike. You said there was something you wanted to ask Mrs. Hall. Oh, yes. I'm glad you reminded me, Sergeant. I almost forgot again. You got any plans for tonight, Peggy? That's not funny. I'm serious. I'd like to take you out. Hey, haven't I got anything to say about that? Don't get me wrong, Sergeant. With the housing shortage what it is, I wouldn't leave you with an empty room. Mr. Schneider can move in in her place. How about it, Dutch? What are you trying to say, Waring? You killed Arthur Hall. There. I said it, and I'm glad. I can't believe it. You can't believe what? Dutch Snyder killed Arthur. Do it yourself, Peggy. But it obviously had to be one of you. Well, in that case, I'm glad you picked on Dutch. Mm. What convinced you he did it? That gun you mislaid. What? Sergeant Corbett said it was a police special, and that's a thirty-eight caliber job. What does that prove? Well, when I asked Corbett if he was positive the bullet was fired from the police special, he admitted they couldn't tell for sure. Yeah, so? So how come when I first went to see Dutch Schneider, he knew definitely it was a thirty-two? Oh, of course. Dutch must have had inside information. The very best. <laughs> After the raid on his club, Dutch went to your home and beat the devil out of Arthur. Well, why didn't he kill him then? Well, Arthur must have promised to return the money he got for him. How could Arthur do that? Arthur had signed over practically everything he owned to me. Sure. And then when Dutch realized he had no chance of recouping, he went to your husband's office and killed him. But in between Arthur, in between that, I mean, Arthur hired Georgie Kelk. By the time Kelk located Dutch, Arthur was dead. Should I say that I'm sorry? Not if you don't feel like it. <laughs> but, uh... You don't want to let this prejudice you against all men. Oh, no, 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 I won't. No, I know now the type I can handle. And when I see one of the other kinds, I'm going to start running. How do you recognize the other kind? Oh, that's easy. They're private detectives. That's the way I'm... <laughs> 